In this video, you'll see how to configure service actions for end users in AWS Service Catalog. With service actions, you can allow authorized users to perform self-service operational tasks such as rebooting instances or taking snapshots on AWS Service Catalog products. Service Catalog administrators can provide users with access to predefined actions or define custom actions specific to their use case. Administrators in AWS Service Catalog can provide easily accessible actions to end users of Service Catalog products while abstracting away the process of implementing and executing such actions. To get started, let's navigate to Service Catalog where we're signed in as an administrator. For our purposes, two Service Catalog products have already been created. One of them creates an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or Amazon EC2 instance, and the other creates an Amazon Redshift cluster. Let's create a service action for each of them. AWS provides many predefined System Manager, or SSM, command documents that can be used for Service Catalog service actions or built upon for more complex tasks. Note that the command document type used by Service Catalog for service actions is automation. For our purposes, let's find a simple automation document. This automation document simply restarts an EC2 instance when executed. Select it and scroll down. You can change the name and description for the custom service action using this command document here. In this case, let's retain the default naming. Additionally, if the command requires custom parameters to be used in the execution, you can specify them here. Let's move on and create the action. The action has been created successfully. Next, let's associate this action with the EC2 product defined in AWS Service Catalog. Select the EC2 product. Along with the specific product, you are also prompted to select the product versions for which this service action may be applied. This can be useful if a certain action works on one product version, but not another. In this case, only one version is available, so let's select it and continue. Now that the service action has been created and associated with the EC2 product, let's perform the action on a provisioned instance as if we were an end user. First, navigate to the Provision Products page. This page lists all products an AWS Service Catalog end user has provisioned using our product definitions. For the purposes of this example, there are already two provision products, one for Redshift and one for EC2. Let's select the provisioned EC2 instance. Take a look at the actions that users can perform. As you can see, a service action to restart an EC2 instance is now listed. Let's execute it. Notice that the instance ID parameter is automatically filled out. Let's continue. As you can see, the EC2 action we defined and executed has successfully completed. As an administrator, you can also create custom automation documents that can be associated with service catalog actions. Let's return to AWS Systems Manager to see how. Let's create a custom automation document to use with our Redshift cluster. To get started, scroll down to the Shared Resources section and then select Documents. Here you can see all of the command documents that are either associated with the present account or predefined by AWS. Again, you can use the predefined command documents as is, or you can customize them. Specify a name for the document and then scroll down. Here you can provide a description and usage instructions for the automation document in Markdown. You can also specify a default role to be assumed by SSM when executing this automation. You can also specify outputs from the automation execution. In this case, let's move on. Let's specify that this automation document targets Redshift clusters. Next, we need to define the steps of our automation execution. We can do this using a graphical wizard below this section, or we can use code. Let's switch to the Editor tab to enter in the JSON code that defines the steps of our automation execution. The editor automatically detects whether the document is specified using JSON or YAML. Each template contains information about the command, parameters to be used in the execution steps, the role used for execution, and the main steps to be run through when executed. In this case, 
We'll specify a step that takes a snapshot of a Redshift cluster for backup purposes and then saves it with the current date. Let's create the automation. The automation document has been successfully created. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, the document specifies one step to be performed. Let's navigate back to AWS Service Catalog to create and execute the action. We'll create the action the same way we did before. To find the newly created automation document, select the Document Source drop-down list and select Custom Documents. Here's the newly created SSM automation document. Select it. Here you can specify details about new actions. By default, the action name and description are taken from the SSM document. Let's leave them as is. Let's retain the default parameters and create the action. A service action has now been created from the automation document. Let's look at the details. Here you can see the products and versions the service action is associated with, and the parameters the action will use. Let's associate this action with our Redshift cluster product. Now that the product has been associated, let's take the point of view of an end user and return to the provisioned products view to execute the custom action. As you can see, the custom service action is now listed. Users can simply select it and then run the action. Information about service actions, as well as a walkthrough of some of the steps run through in this demo, are detailed in this blog post on the AWS website. You've just seen how to configure service actions for end users in AWS Service Catalog. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.